Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial on creating a spectrum ribbon effect in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to do. Now there is this YouTube user called Julie Rose who shows you in her videos how to create this effect. One of the problems is that in many cases in her video tutorials, she uses a foreign language version of Illustrator, so it's really hard to see what options she's selecting. In addition, there is no text content on her videos. So I was asked by one of my readers to show them how to create this effect, but I just want to make it clear that it's Julie Rose's effect, and all I'm doing is showing you how to recreate her effect. And I'll add the link to her video into the description here. So we make that very clear. So let's get started in Illustrator. And this is the version that I created, but we're going to start afresh from another document. So I'm going to choose File and then New. And I'm going to make sure that I know how big my image is. So I'm just going to do 1,000 by 1,000 pixels in size. So just click OK. And there's just a standard square document in Illustrator. And so what we're going to do next is to grab the pencil tools. So this is the pencil tool here in Illustrator. I'm just going to double click on it because it's fairly important that you get the settings right. Now, we don't want to edit selected paths at this stage, and but we do want to keep it selected. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a good setting. And we do want it to be fairly smooth. So I'm going to crank smooth up. So let's just click OK. And let's set the fill to nothing and the stroke just to black. And what I'm going to do is just come across here and just create some shapes. Now, because I've got the pencil tool set to smooth, this is going to be a nice smooth line, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, I. Nope, that's working perfectly. So the settings that I had for the pencil tool are working really, really well, even though I've got keep selected selected here, we're not editing selected paths, so we're actually able to work very nicely. So I'm just going to keep going here, and really all I'm looking for is to create some interesting shapes here. And that's probably not a shape that I want, so I'm just going to press the delete button for that. I just didn't really want it to be so pointy. Oh, I've to gone and done that again, so let's think not so pointy. <laughs> OK, and let's do one more. OK, so I have a series of shapes created here. They're just lines, just a series of lines across the screen. So they've all got a black stroke, and they've got no fill at all. The next thing we're going to do is blend them. And I'm thinking that being able to select them on this side of the screen is going to be easier, because when we blend them, we have to select each of these lines. So I just might make sure that these lines are a little bit apart, so they're going to be just a little bit easier to select to make sure I've got all of them selected. OK, so now I'm going to deselect everything with Control or Command D, and let's just click outside. So then I'm going to select the Blend tool, and I want to select on the lines that I want to blend. So I want to blend this one, and this one, and this one, and I want to grab this one, and this one, and this one. So right now we've got what looks like a prime mess, but that's fine. Everything's nicely selected. All we need to do is to set all the settings for the Blend tool, which really right now are not doing us any favors. So let's double click on the Blend tool to open the Blend Options dialog. I want to turn Preview on. And instead of Smooth Color, I'm just going to use Specified Steps. And I'm going to crank up the number of steps. So I'm actually pressing Shift Up Arrow here to get a large number of steps. And so I'm looking for something that's going to give me an effect that's almost smooth. You can see I'm seeing some lines through here. I may want to go a bit higher. And this is entirely up to you, just how high you go. I actually quite like the lines through the effects. I'm probably going to bring it down to 50. So just going to select that and click OK. And now what Julia did in her video was she changed the transparency of this object. So let's just go and grab the entire object, and then she just adjusted the transparency, which we can do here in the Appearance panel. So you get to that by choosing Window and then Appearance. There it is. And I'm just going to change down the opacity a bit. So it's a little bit lighter. Okay. 
So the next thing is to expand and ungroup this. So with it all still selected, it's just much easier to leave it all selected. Let's go to Object and then Expand. Now, the trick with Expand and Expand Appearance is that there is no trick. Generally, one or other is available and they both do exactly the same thing. It's just that it's a legacy issue with Illustrator. So let's just choose Expand and click OK. And then immediately we're going to do Object Ungroup. And then we're going to expand it again. Object, expand, click OK. So now I can select the object and I can individually color these lines. So to do that, I need to get a gradient. So let's go here and let's just click here on the fill and let's select gradient. So now we're working with a gradient color. You can see that this is the gradient, but that's not the gradient that we want, but we just have a gradient selected. So now I'm going to go to the gradient dialog here which I can get to by choosing Window and then Gradient. But before I do that, I really need the Swatches panel because I need to find a swatch. It's just much easier to use an existing swatch. So let's choose Window Swatches if you're not seeing your Swatches panel. I'm going to click the Flyout menu, Open Swatch Library, Gradients. And right now I want Spectrums. So I'm just going to click on Spectrums and that opens a mini dialog which I have just lost on my other screen. Here it is. Just going to drag it into position. And this mini dialog has a whole series of gradients that we can borrow. And I'm just going to borrow this one. So there's a nice colored gradient. Because I have my object selected when I applied the gradient, there is the gradient applied to my shape. Now, you might be able to get a different look by applying it to the stroke rather than the fill, but that's up to you. Just experiment with what options you have available. So now that you've got your gradient applied to the object, you can adjust the gradient. So you can take things off this gradient line if you want to, and then you can further adjust the gradient itself to make changes to what is where in your illustration. So if we wanted more red and orange, and if we wanted a sharper transition, for example, into our orange, we could do that. And we can move colors around Whatever you want to do with this gradient, you can now do. So we could just double click here and choose a different color still for our gradient. Well, let's go and choose this from the swatches. So I can put purple on the other end of my gradient if I wanted to. And we're going into purple here. Now, having done this, you can then reshape this. So with it selected, you can shape it. So you can choose the selection tool and you can adjust the size of it if you want to. And you can also rotate it and you can skew it. So anything that you can do with a regular series of lines in Illustrator can be done with this shape. Now, I tried to crop this earlier by creating a rectangle the shape of the artboard, exactly the same as the artboard, and I tried to use the crop tool, but it just stopped my machine. So I'm thinking that probably because of the complexity of this shape, if you want it to run across the artboard and to be clipped to it, you're probably better off making a clipping mask. So I'm just going to click the rectangle tool and click once in my image. Now I'm going to create a rectangle that is exactly the same size as my artboard, which is a thousand by a thousand. You can just fill it with anything, it doesn't really matter. With it selected, I have up here the option Align to Artboard Selected, which means I can click here on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center, and that will move this shape exactly over the artboard. And now with everything selected, so I can just go to my Layers palette here and just grab everything. Now I can choose Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And it, you can see it didn't matter what color was in the filled object on top because it's just being used as a clipping mask and it's just cutting off the shape where it runs over the edges of our artboard. So there you have it. This is the original artist's work. It's Julie Rose. She has a YouTube channel. My problem with that or my readers problem with this is that this is a Russian, I think, version of Illustrator. So none of the menu options are actually legible to people who don't speak the language that this was created in. And additionally, there is no English captioning here. So you will be a bit stuck trying to work out exactly what's happening there. So this is my version of her tutorial 
I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.